Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online lectures on public speaking. Friends, till now you have been listening about the various requisites of public speaking and I do hope that you are now in a better frame of mind. You actually are more prepared and you feel yourself bubbling now as to how with the sort of knowledge that you have gathered, how you can yourself start speaking. Of course, many of you might be bubbling, many of you might be excited enough as to when to start. But as I said, in the beginning is the end and in the end is the beginning. You remember, I think these were the last words in the previous lecture. So now many of you might be thinking to start, but before you start, you also have to understand one more important thing as how to start. Because as a public speaker, you want to express, but in order to express you first have to impress whom? Your audience members. And how can you impress your audience members? With your clothing, with your tone, with the technology or with some other gadgets? No, there are some other things as well. And that is why I have titled this lecture as Breaking the Ice. You have all warmed yourself up with a lot of information, now you have to break the ice. And how to break the ice? Meaning thereby, how to start? What could be the first impression so that you can be considered to be an effective speaker? Most of you might be thinking, is first impression required? Of course, it is required. And if it is required, why is it so important? Can you accept a speaker who is in a very different sort of dress, very casual, the hair unkempt, the facial expressions contorted, fine? And the expressions also, lazy lip movements and many more. Will you really accept them as a better speaker in the first instance? No. So, first impression is very much important. My dear friends, please remember one thing. A good first impression, as J.K. Rowling says, can work wonders. Every public speaker can win or can lose in the very first instance. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. But how to make a first impression? What are the requisites to make the first impression? In this lecture of today, we shall be underlining those small things which most of us often skip over and then we realize only lately that these things also attach a lot of importance to somebody becoming an effective public speaker who can be remembered for months, for years. Now, what is that first impression in public speaking? As I have been saying, that the first impression has to play a very crucial role in the personal, social, as well as professional development of an individual. Remember the speaker that is still echoing in your minds, that is still stamped in your memory. What was so distinct about him? Fine, and you will find the answer uh, to why in the very first moment the person impressed you so much. One of the major Chinese thinkers named Sun Tzu says, every battle is 
won or lost before it is ever fought. I mean, a prepared soldier can display a better triumph on his face first before he goes to the battlefield. So, preparedness is a must. The skill of casting a good impression, it actually lends you an edge as a speaker, fine. And what is that? Grabbing the attention, fine. Attracting the attention. And we have already talked about the credibility of the audience, because on many occasions you simply go to listen to a speaker who actually is at a lofty position, who is a celebrity, who is a man uh, for whom one goes to thousands and thousands of miles to listen to or one spends a lot of time over a channel or radio or whatsoever. But are all of us having the same sort of celebrity status? No especially my young friends, those who are novice and trying their hands on speaking as a public speaker, they have to practice more in advance before they go to speak, before they break the ice. So, the audience is mostly won over much before the speech has begun. You can also go back and find in a mind's eye how a certain speaker cast a spell on you. So, public speaking, since it is a special skill, special skill in the contemporary world and it makes a first impression happen, because that is a vital component. Therefore, it can be established that both the speaker as well as the listener, they actually build blocks of the road to success. Now, there is another word that has crept in building blocks and these building blocks, what are these building blocks? We will come to that. So, let us have a fact check. In a survey of 2000 hiring managers, 33 percent claimed to know whether or not they would be hiring a candidate just in less than 30 seconds. Many of you who are school and college students, you might have found if you have ever visited the placement cell, you might have found that these people, I mean the recruiters, they just in the first instance, their eye is finally fixed on a person whether they are going to take him or they are going to reject him. So, first impression matters my dear friend. And how does this first impression matter? What are these factors? We have talked about uh, the building blocks, but before we go into the details of those, let us actually take a quote by Dale Carnegie, where he underlines four things. What are those four things? How we look. As a speaker, before your lips open up, your face is seen, is not it? You are visually seen, you display yourself visually. So, how we look, what we do, fine, your action, fine. So, throughout, right from the beginning, when you appear at the stage, when you appear before the audience, when you are behind the dais, when you are in a public show, what we say and how we say. I mean utterance, we have been saying because it is a course of public speaking. Now, how we look? I mean appearance, does appearance matter? Of course, but appearances can be deceptive also at times. We groom ourselves, is not it? We groom ourselves and we take utmost care when we are grooming ourselves. So, what one needs to do as a public speaker is align the appearance with the image you want to portray and the message that you want to deliver. How is that possible? It actually depends upon the occasion. What sort of occasion? What is the topic? What is the exigency of the situation? right from your personal appearance, because personal appearance has so many things, we shall be discussing in detail when you go to the non-verbal section, your clothing, your hair, 
your shoes, your slides, your flyers, brushes, handouts, all of these things ought to appear to be engaging and fascinating to the audience. You know, in an audience, you know, if you uh, find their mindset, the audience members do not have any individuality. They are the group people. They are the men, they are the mash, they are the crowd. Now, the crowd simply stares at you, looks at. So, in the first instance, what you need to do is, you need to align with your appearance. And here, as I have been saying, your content and the contents that you bring actually matter a lot. What we do? Your action. You are actually going to make some choice. You are going to have some action. And whatever you are going to say, what you do, is it consistent with what you speak in public? I mean, every audience member will judge you on the basis of your action. You cannot befool them for a long time. Whatever you say, how true are your words, fine. And even this can be interpreted in different way as to how you act as a public speaker. What you say, I mean your words, your language. And what you say, not only verbally, but non-verbally also, fine. Both your verbal and non-verbal, they actually carry important weightage, fine, special significance in creating the very first impression. One has to make, as a public speaker, lucid, I mean clear, smart and professional statements. That is why it is said, we shall discuss it when we come to language part, that when you are going to say it, say it my dear friend, say it clearly. Do not camouflage it in words, in the jungle of your speech. Curate your speech carefully, focused on the audience and the occasion. For what occasion are you speaking? On which topic are you speaking? It is always better if as a public speaker, you restrict yourself to using a jargon free language. I think all of you are aware of jargon. Jargons are the technical terms. People of a particular profession, of a particular discipline, they are aware of the jargons. But as I have been saying that audience members comprise a multilingual, multicultural, diverse group they are not aware of many of the jargons that a public speaker uses. So, you have to use a language that is intelligible and also appropriate diction, fine. Here, our focus has to be given on how you utter, how much of stress. This actually depends upon the way you maintain the distance between words, sentences, threads of thoughts and of course, on the pronunciation part, you have to be very clear my dear friend. How we say, it is not only what we say, when we say what we say, you are confined to language, but how you say it? Are you confident? Is the tone formal? Is the tone cordial? Fine. It is in this regard better to wear a smile, fine. You have to be very cordial, fine. Bring a smile that costs you nothing, but gives you a lot of dividends, my dear friends, fine. A person who does not smile is considered by the audience members to be very serious and not a man of the crowd. So, it is always better to wear a smile on your face. Refine your pronunciation. Of course, this is going to be a very complex process. Those who did not have the opportunity of getting educated uh, through different English medium schools and all, 
when they use language, especially a foreign language, they have certain hesitations, but still they can manage by practicing through a good dictionary, through a good thesaurus. And nowadays, there are quite a good number of software also available that can actually help you learn the proper pattern, the proper pronunciation. It is always better if a public speaker makes his tone conversational, fine? Because you know, one does not want as an audience members to be imposed upon. And that is why time and again, you might have heard people saying, friends, fine, I think I'm hitting at the right point. And if I'm not, please catch me. Let me know from you that if I am accessible, if my thoughts are being conveyed properly and in and between you find that he makes use of certain tags, certain confirmatory notes. So, let your tone be conversational suited to the comprehensive ability of your audience friends. Now, we had been saying that when we talk about the first impression, there are certain building blocks. What are these building blocks? I mean, if you have a look at it, it actually talks about the non-verbals, non-verbals. And in this regard, I am actually reminded of a famous psychologist as well as anthropologist who says that when it comes to your diction, it is only 7 percent of your diction that matters. 38 percent actually is related to the confidence level, your voice and your grammar, fine. And remaining 55 percent, these are actually non-verbals which comprise your appearance, your face, your eyes, your dress sense, fine. And also your attitude, your shoes, your look, fine. How you maintain eye contact and all, all these play a vital role as building blocks. Now, if we have to focus on the first impression with the audience, can there be some room for the tips? Because you know, what we see, what we hear as audience members goes through several processes that are in the background. If you really want to make your mark as a public speaker, before you can make your first impression, not only are you going to groom yourself up in a very comfortable, no, when it comes to dress, one has to uh, wear a dress that is quite comfortable, not a dress that is very dazzling, that is very signing, fine. Rather, the outfit should be decent and it should be suited to the occasion, fine. One always have to keep a sort of appearance that is actually clear, that is attractive and that is soothing. Now, when you are going to create a sort of comfortable ambience, one should actually ensure beforehand that there are certain things which cannot be neglected. What are they? Because as a public speaker, you also need a sort of confidence. The confidence oozes out of you at every pore. How can you build that confidence up? You have to ensure that there is proper lighting, fine. I hear when I am speaking, I feel myself a bit comfortable because the lighting is fine. The microphone is also uh, quite cordial and helpful rather. The seating arrangements, you know, as a speaker, a speaker gets a lot of enthusiasm when he finds people sitting properly, not in scattered groups. When you come across a crowd comprising thousands of people, you know, half of your energy actually is bolstered, my dear friend. And you must also see that no external music or external forces, external noises are coming because they are going to lessen your self-confidence. If you are making use of technology, please ensure 
that the technological tools are appropriate and they are in working condition. All these actually will help you a lot and when you are going to deliver, I mean the day when you are going to deliver your talk, but before that have you not made a lot of preparation, have you not planned your speech and this planning your speech takes several factors into consideration. The first is that you know the occasion, you also know the audience members. So, when you combine the occasion and the audience members, you will find that you can do that only when you have done a lot of research. Why a particular person like you have been called to deliver a talk on this? Does your expertise fall in that category? If it is so, and then what are the audience members expectations? So, when you are planning your speech beforehand, highlight the key messages audience members who are actually waiting for you, they actually are having a lot of excitement and in the very first look, when they cast the first look on the speaker, fine, the speaker should also say to it that he displays a sort of confidence and cordiality. One must as a speaker define one's objectives rather leaving the crowd thinking of what the speaker is going to say. Of course, this charisma can be done for some time, but not for a long term, my dear friend. One has to prepare a proper beginning. We will we'll discuss what we mean by proper beginning. There are several variants, there are several thoughts about how to begin, fine. There are several ways and then one should also plan that when one is going to close one's talk or speech, it has to be memorable because you have certain things that the audience will carry. They will have something to take away. What is the takeaway of this talk? What can they remember? And as a public speaker, I know most of you will practice your communication skills. When I say communication skills, I actually am stressing upon your vocabulary. What sort of vocabulary will be more impressive? How do I articulate? Fine. Have I really researched? Have I really rehearsed? Have I really taken the feedback of my friends? And if I have taken the feedback of my friends, am I in a position uh, to keep it natural? Have I worked on the feedback also? As a public speaker, you cannot ignore all these things. And moreover, time is an important factor, my dear friend. Whenever you are invited to deliver a talk, you are given time. So, much of the preparation when you are doing, you should also take into consideration whether your entire content is covered in the time that has been given to you. So, scheme a strategic pre-event promotion. Sometimes you are called by an advertising agency. Sometimes your speech has to be marketed and if such events are there and if it is only a social function, if you are going to do it through social media tools like Facebook, Twitter, hashtags and online campaigning, I think you need to clear yourself of all these factors that can play a vital role when you are going to communicate in public. Now, one must always ensure that one leaves something as a takeaway for the audience because after your talk is over, your presentation is over, your speech is over, what will the audience members remember? Target to achieve a lingering effect on your audience by providing them with some catchy takeaways. We will come to that, how much depends upon the title or the topic of your talk, summary brochures. Sometimes many people also can provide CDs, DVDs pertaining to the entire content of the message. Some people also provide the handouts depending upon your content, occasion and audience all these things can vary. Now, where do we fall or where do we slip? Where do we run sort of as a public speaker? Fine in building the first impression. There are certain common slips. What are they? Bad posture. It has been found out 
that 17.8 percent of speakers, fine, they actually do not work on this area. Rather, in public speaking, fine, what is important is a good posture. What do I mean by posture? You will find that sometimes or the other, when a person is speaking as a public speaker, one is not able either to stand properly or to move properly or to connect himself properly to the audience members. The second most detrimental thing is that many speakers, they do not spend time on making proper eye contact. 37 percent people fail to make eye contact and this has been found mostly in the young and aspiring speakers who are still novices and they have to work hard on trying to establish a proper eye contact. We shall devote more time to it in the non-verbal section where we shall tell you what exactly we mean by eye contact and how we can maintain an eye contact throughout our talk. It has also been found that around 21 percent people are expressionless. We call those people as having stolid, stolid. What do I mean by stolid? Having no expression at all. That is why it is said, please cast a smile, fine. A smile costs nothing but gives a lot, fine. But one should not keep on smiling throughout the smile actually eases the tension that is between the speaker and the listener. And then many of them, I mean around 26 percent people are not properly prepared. They are not well prepared for their talk. And all these can actually help even a good content become or end in a sort of futility, my dear friend that actually ends as a failure. So, as a public speaker, all you need to work on is that you need to prepare beforehand what you are going to talk about. In this regard, I think it is not out of place to make a mention of Carnegie's six rules where he says, as a public speaker, be genuinely interested. If a public speaker is genuinely interested in the subject, he will be interested in the audience members. One has to smile, isn't it? One has to smile. The smile has to be very cordial, fine, because as I have been saying, that it does not cost too much. You will find here once again, uh, there comes a sort of cultural difference, Germans smile less and that is why Germans may be considered fine, quite you know immodest, impolite when it comes to their smile. Now, if you know some of the names of the audience members, please name them. If you do not know their names, even then you can address them as friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me thy ears, fine. And then listen, as a public speaker, one must ensure that he is being listened to and he can be listened to only when he is prepared, he is interested. When you are working on the content of it and you know about your audience members, please draft your talk in such a manner that it is interesting to them, it is beneficial to them. If you think of their interest, because as I have been saying that every audience members wants to hear what he or she wants to hear. So, in the very first instance when he knows uh, that the topic is not interesting throughout, however hard you try, you will fail as a public speaker my dear friend and make them feel important. It is only because of them that you are important. Your significance depends upon the audience members. So, do not belittle them, do not insult them with your words, with your remarks, with your harsh comments or whatsoever. Now, when you have done all these practices beforehand, the gala day has come, the delivery day, the day when you are going to talk about certain small things that ought to be kept into consideration. Why do not you go 
they are beforehand. You will often find a person who always says that my train is at 1010 and I have to be there by 1010 often misses the train. So, once you have decided you have a train at 1010, you must go there by 10 my dear friend. So, it is always better even as a speaker to arrive a few minutes early because you know it has a benefit and the benefit is that you get yourself acquainted with the audience, you get yourself acquainted with the ambience, you have a feel of the entire you know situation, the place because sometimes or the other you may have some delays because of the traffic. So, it is always better to arrive well in time and for that you will have to plan beforehand. You check the ambience, you check the gadgets and everything and then when you start to deliver, check your posture. Nowadays, nobody loves a speaker who stands static and who stands on a platform. Rather, the audience members also feel that if the speaker can be at the same level, that is why you might have found many speakers coming down at the level of the audience and they speak. It is always better if you can relax your face muscles and as I have been saying, smile and the world belongs to you. Only a little smile can make you triumphant and please try to make eye contact throughout. Now comes the opening, when everything is done, now you are going to open. How should one open? What should the first sentence? Fine, you have already prepared a lot of content, but you are going to win or to lose only in the 60 to 90 seconds my dear friend, fine. Many people who start giving self introduction, fine. I mean they know beforehand who you are, fine and they are actually imaging a lot about you. Many of them might have googled also about you, about your achievements and also there is no need giving a long introduction about yourself. It is always better that you come to the point as early as possible, but before you start you actually should greet your audience members. Sometimes one can practice different ways of opening the talk, either through asking a question, either through starting with a story, with an, with an incident, with an anecdote, with a quote. But remember, if you are going to put a quote, remember the quote thoroughly, is not it? Sometimes one starts in a very imperative manner, sometimes one starts in a very requesting tone, raise your hands if you really want to know the answer to the question that I am going to put forth, fine. Opening sometimes can be humorous, but I will rather advise you not to start your introduction with a humor, because many of the audience members may consider your humor to be of a different sort and may not understand and the humor may become a rumor my dear friend. So, a bold or shocking statement can often work. In this regard, let me uh, give you a small, fine, a small clip from Benito Mussolini's talk. I think most of you know about Benito Mussolini, fine, of Italy, who actually Italy had fought uh, the World War first on the side of UK and France. But when the peace treaty uh, happened, they got only little crumbs and they were very much dissatisfied and that is why Mussolini wanted to compensate for that through organizing his fascist forces and he also wanted to annex Abyssinia, is not it? So, let us take some lines from Mussolini's speech and you see how he coins words because Mussolini was a great orator, fine and a great administrator as well. So, what he says? Black shirts of revolution, men and women of Italy, Italians all over the world, beyond the mountains, beyond the seas, listen. A solemn hour is about to strike in the history of the country. Twenty million Italians are at this moment gathered in the squares of Italy. It is the greatest demonstration that human history records. Twenty millions, one heart alone, one will 
one decision. Look at how beautifully he opens and then he provides, he supports his own arguments and then towards the end, fine, he actually gives a very beautiful message and people feel that they got a lot of thought in it and they really considered Mussolini to be one of the great orators and leaders who could bring a change to their country. Now, in the previous lecture, if you remember, uh, I had hinted it out that as a public speaker, you have to be culturally sensitive. So, we need not spend too much time on it. So, communicate ideas in a language which is sensitive to age, gender and culture. A public speaker ought to be polite and courteous when you are putting even your arguments the way Mussolini put, let there be a sort of decorum. You need to encourage participation, isn't it? How? How can you make your audience members participate? By making your speech more inclusive. Italians listen, men of Italy listen, fine. You can come across several such speeches where you can find uh, the orator tries uh, to make the audience members participate in the event that she is going to do. Tailor your tone. Your voice should be as such that it can provide very advantageous for the audience members. Whatever you are going to say as a speaker, please ensure that there is authenticity. And of course, on the right hand side, you can see the speaker, how he is working on his clothing, on his appearance, on his smile on his confidence, on his handshake, on the correct body posture. Who are the speakers often heard and often cheered? Those who greet their audience members, those who establish a cordial rapport, those who address the audience on a personal level, as I said, coming down from the pulpit or the stage and one who channelizes one's thought so as to make the listeners feel comfortable, so as to make the listeners feel cordial. But there are those who actually pull their audience into a sort of sleep. And who are such people? Those who always keep their audience members waiting. How can one keep their audience members waiting? If one is a very slow speaker, when the audience members have to fumble forwards, if the pauses are too longer, fine. If there are so many nasalized pauses, ah, ums, ooh. And one who simply read out to the audience members and also in a very monotonous voice because the audience members wants to be cheered and as a speaker, you want to be heard, my dear friend. In this survey, you can find that 15 percent people, 15 percent rather, they rarely think about making their first impression. Whereas, 65 percent people, 65 percent people, they usually think of making their first impression and they might have experimented as well. 14 percent always think that first impression actually pays, whereas it is only 6 percent people, only 6 percent who never think that first impression can work. But my dear friends, you also might have realized through your own experiences how your first impression works or how the first impression of your speakers work. So, there are certain things to be kept into consideration and in this regard, when a speaker keeps the audience members weighted, the audience members become quite aweary, tired. In this regard, uh, a Franco-English writer, poet says, tell them what you are going to tell them. I mean, in the first instance, Tell them what you are going to tell them. I mean, disclose, reveal your topic. Then tell them. Then speak. I mean, argue. Then tell them that 
you have told them meaning thereby through these words he provides the essence of how a powerful speech or talk should begin and end but as novice speakers all of must should not only underline these facts rather we should be prepared and we should keep the following in order to prove ourselves a better speaker and what are they avoid opening your talk with a humorous story my dear friends one writer says that for audience members and for a public speech nothing is as important as a man you know when you are on the stage this writer says when you are on the stage see that nobody is there on the stage except you because the audience members attentions are diverted distracted because in a public speaking what matters most the most important thing is the speaker himself so begin your talk on a very cordial note your audience members uh, should be interested in your talk and they are not ready to listen to your apologies many people who begin with apologies they often are condemned so it is better to ignore the apologies and rather speak in a very cordial way one has as a public speaker not only to create curiosity but to continue but to sustain the audience members interest throughout one has to open one's talk presentation with a story anecdote fine i mean there can be quite a good number of uh, such quotations also can come across heard melodies are sweet those unheard are sweeter a thing of beauty can be a joy forever fine i mean there can be quite a good number of depending upon the occasion and the purpose you can bring them into your own speech avoid opening your talk too formally fine don't stand there like a statue and don't behave like a statue please so that you are there and you are interested to talk to them and your talk is going to be very conversational and at the end of the talk they are going to take something away as memorable audiences always hear what they expect to hear so your audience members just in the beginning when you disclose or reveal your topic right from the beginning they either become a part of you or they become a part from you so as a public speaker you have to keep all these things into consideration my dear friend and before we end once again i'll repeat you never get a second chance to make a first impression because first impression is the last impression first impression lasts i hope your thirst for public speech does not remain static it continues it keeps on longing it keeps on lingering and i'll try my level best to deliver my talk and my suggestions so that after the course is over you can come out successfully as an effective public speaker with this i come to the end of today's talk thank you very much have a nice day